In this next set of videos, I'd like to tell you about recommender systems. There were two reasons, I had two motivations for why I wanted to talk about recommender systems. The first is just that it's an important application of machine learning. Over the last few years, occasionally I visit different you know, technology companies here in Silicon Valley and I often talk to people working on machine learning applications there. And so I ask people, what are your most important applications of machine learning? Or uh, what are the machine learning applications that you would most like to get an improvement in the performance of? And one of the most frequent answers I heard was that there are many groups out in Silicon Valley now trying to build better recommender systems. So if you think about what uh, the websites of like, Amazon or uh, what Netflix or what eBay or what um, iTunes Genius made by Apple does, there are many websites or systems that try to recommend new products to you. So Amazon recommends new books to you, Netflix tries to recommend new movies to you, and so on. And these sorts of recommender systems that look at what books you may have purchased in the past or what movies you've rated in the past, but these sorts of systems that are responsible for today a substantial fraction of Amazon's revenue. And for a company like Netflix, the recommendations that they make to the users is also responsible for a substantial fraction of the movies watched by the users. And so an improvement in the performance of a recommender system uh, can have a substantial and immediate impact on the bottom line of many of these companies. Um, Recommender systems is kind of a funny problem. Within academic machine learning, so that if you go to an academic machine learning conference, the problem of recommender systems actually receives you know, relatively little attention, or at least it's sort of a smallish fraction of what goes on within academia. But if you look at what's happening in many technology companies, uh, the ability to build these systems seems to be a high priority for many companies. And that's one of the reasons why I want to talk about it in this class. The second reason that I want to talk about recommender systems is that as we approach the last few sets of videos of this class, I wanted to talk about a few of the big ideas in machine learning and share with you, you know, some of the big ideas in machine learning. And we've already seen in this class that features are important for machine learning, and the features you choose will have a big effect on the performance of your learning algorithm. So there's this big idea in machine learning, which is that for some problems, uh, maybe not all problems, but some problems, there are algorithms that can try to automatically learn a good set of features for you. So rather than trying to hand design or hand code the features, which is mostly what I'm doing so far, there are a few settings where you might be able to have an algorithm just learn what features to use. And the uh, recommender systems is just one example of that sort of setting. There are many others, but in going through recommender systems, we'll be able to uh, go a little bit into this idea of learning the features and uh, you'll be able to see at least one example of this, I think, big idea of machine learning as well. So without further ado, let's get started and uh, talk about the recommender system problem formulation. As my running example, I'm going to use the problem of predicting movie ratings. So here's the problem. Imagine that you're a website or a company that uh, sells or rents out movies or what have you. And so, you know, Amazon and Netflix and uh, I think iTunes are all examples of companies that do, uh, are all examples of companies that do this. And let's say you let your users rate different movies uh, using a one to five star rating. So using, you know, something one, two, three, four, or five stars. In order to make this example just a little bit nicer, I'm going to allow zero to five stars as well, um, because that just makes some of the math come out nicer. Although most, most of these websites use a one to five star scale. So here I have five movies, uh, you know, Love at Last, Romance Forever, Cute Puppies of Love, um, Non-Stop Car Chasing and Swords with the Karate. And uh, we have four users, which are uh, calling, you know, Alice, Bob, Carol, and Dave with initials A, B, C, and D. We call them users one, two, three, and four. So let's say Alice really likes Love at Last and rates that five stars, really likes Romance Forever, rates at five stars. She did not watch Cute Puppies of Love, but did not rate it. So we don't have a rating for that. And uh, Alice really did not like non-stop car chases or swords vs. karate. And uh, different user, Bob, user two, maybe rates a different set of movies. Maybe he likes Love at Last, did not watch Romance Forever, gives that a rating of four, a zero, a zero. And uh, maybe our third user rates the zero, did not watch that one, zero, five, five. And yeah, you know, let's just fill in some of the numbers. Okay. And so just to introduce a bit of notation, this notation we'll be using throughout. 
I'm going to use NU to denote the number of users. So in this example, NU will be equal to 4. So the U subscript stands for users. And NM I'm going to use to denote the number of movies. So here I have 5 movies, so NM equals 5. And you know, for this example, um, I have for this example, I have loosely three maybe romantic, romantic comedy movies and uh, three, two action movies. And you know, if, if you look at this small example, it looks like Alice and Bob are giving high ratings to these uh, romantic comedies or movies about love and giving very low ratings about the action movies. And for Carol and Dave, it's the opposite, right? Carol and Dave, uses three and four, really like the action movies and give them high ratings, but uh, don't like the romance and love type movies as much. Specifically, in the recommender system problem, we are given the following data. Our data comprises the following. We have these values rij, and rij is 1 if user j has rated movie i. So our users rate only some of the movies, and so you know has, we don't have ratings for those movies. And whenever rij is equal to 1, whenever user j has rated movie i, we also get, the num get this number yij, which is a rating given by user j to movie i. And so, yij would be a number you know, from 0 up to 5, depending on the star rating, 0 to 5 stars that the user gave that particular movie. So the recommender system problem is, given this data set, that is given these um, rij's and the yij's, to look through your data and look at all the movie ratings that are missing and to try to predict what these values of the question mark should be. Um, in this particular example, I have a very small number of movies and a very small number of users, and so most users have rated most movies, but in a realistic setting, your users would, each of your users may have rated only a minuscule fraction of your movies. But look at this data, you know, if Alice and Bob both like the uh, romantic movies, maybe we think that Alice would have given this a 5, maybe we think Bob would have given this a 4.5 or some high value, whereas we think maybe Carol and Dave would have given these very low ratings. And Dave, well, if, if Dave really likes action movies, maybe he would have given Swords and Karate a 4 rating or maybe a 5 rating. Okay, and so the jo our job in developing a recommender system is to come up with a um, learning algorithm that can automatically fill in these missing values for us so that we can look at, say, the movies that the user has not yet watched and recommend new movies to that user to watch or try to predict what else might be interesting to a user. So that's the formalism of the recommender system problem. In the next video, we'll start to develop a learning algorithm to address this problem.